Hey, streamers and dreamers. We are back, gang, with another cleanup episode of Tony Restores and Explorers. So we're out here in December. Feels like a 50 degree degree day. Uh, really crazy. Figured what better time to attack some trash. So that's what we're doing. As you can see out there in the distance, we've got uh, a little bit of a dry pond, which as you guys know, is the spot for trash. So I'm just making my way down the road here, doing my best to make a difference. So glad to see you guys. I hope you guys have wonderful Christmas plans with your family and that kind of thing. To me, the biggest gift uh, we can give would be back to the mother plant that we all spawned out of and try to uh, keep it clean. So while you guys are out there this Christmas, uh, you know, you see a patchy area somewhere that looks dirty and could use a little refresher, don't hesitate. Drive around with some garbage bags and uh, if you can, hop out, do a little bit of cleaning. It's my favorite time of year too for gift giving. Uh, I really like to gift secondhand and you know, as you guys know, refurbish different things and refinish them, restore them. Uh, I think it's a much better gift giving experience when you do that uh, rather than just going to buy something new or, you know, gift cards, what have you, which of course I'm guilty of. Uh, but it makes gift giving so much more sentimental if we, uh, if we do it ourselves and make something ourselves or restore something that was going to end up as trash and make it beautiful again. So keep that in the back of your minds this holiday season, guys. That, uh, you know, not everything has to be brand new, consumerist delight. But uh, yeah, even more so than that, guys, is uh, not littering. Boy, I tell you, even though, you know, when you think you're recycling and, and properly disposing of trash, 80% of the time it still ends up in a landfill anyway. So if we're working up against those numbers, we've got a ton of work to do. And we want to keep this place beautiful. So, you know, do what we can. Use less, do not litter. Uh, I have a lot of ground to make up. Uh, I never would objectively litter um, throughout my youth, but just being careless is, uh, is enough to do damage. And I can only, I regret so much the hundreds, if not thousands of cigarettes, cigarette buds that have been tossed out my window without even uh, considering the damage it's doing to myself, let alone the environment. So, Ironically, um, I found some nicotine lozenges here a second ago. Somebody trying to quit using those nasty things. So I believe at one time tobacco is probably, uh, you know, if, it, if used right and balanced, in harmony with nature was probably a wonderful plant experience, but now it's been exploited and corrupted by greedy companies looking for money to capitalize on people's suffering. Ooh, look at these pricklies. So, always be careful out here, guys. These pricklies, they sneak up on you, especially in the winter time. But it's nice, you can eat, it's easy to see them in the winter time. Nasty guys. Nasty, nasty guys. Oh, here, another gigantic pet peeve of mine, guys. Um, here in our year of the Lord, 2023, 
you see people throw out full water bottles. This is an unopened bottle of Aquafina. Tossed out the window. Gross, disgusting, terrible. First of all, you shouldn't be drinking your water out of plastic anyway. You know, there's plenty of other alternatives nowadays. Get, get yourself a water bottle, stainless steel or something. Second of all, you didn't even drink any of it. You'd be doing more justice opening it up, dumping it out, so that at least the soil and the plants and the fungus can get at that, get that sweet, sweet water in there. So wow, we found a, a chunky area here, guys. Chunky. With lots of pricklies. It's absolutely terrifying because I do not want to get prickled today. Uh, a prickly pear. Look for the bare necessities. The simple bare necessities. About your worries and your strife. I mean the bare necessities. Mother Nature's recipes to bring the bare necessities of life. Just a reminder too, guys, we are not anti-plastic on this channel. Uh, plastic certainly serves its purpose. It's like we've talked about many times, key in developing small, precise medical devices. It's does have its uses but this one-time use single plastic stuff has got to stop it must end it must end otherwise it's the demise of the human race so I'm reading a, a book here as well silent spring which is considered to be one of the start of the uh, environmental movements and sh there's a huge railing against the uh, Oh boy, got some pricklies on me, look at that. That easy. Against the pesticide and herbicide companies. And how it took decades of diligent work by many warriors, environmental warriors, to prevent the use of, plactis, or, uh, of pesticides and herbicides in their communities. It ain't easy when you're fighting the greed. There is, uh, Plenty of that to go around. The greedy folks that uh, don't really care how much damage is done. As long as they can get a, you know, a boat for their boat. As long as they could take the family, you know, to uh, nine vacations that year so that they could post it all on Facebook for clout. Ugh. It's a little moldy home there, huh? Plus, I don't know about you guys where you're at in the world, but it, this weather to me isn't normal. And I know weather fluctuates and obviously we should be grateful that we're in a period of warming on the earth because it was an ice age, that wouldn't be good for any living things, but I think collectively everybody deep, deep down knows what kind of damage and harm we're doing and uh, ignores it. We can't keep ignoring it, guys. We've got major production issues, major societal civilization type issues that are now global. Uh, that we need to correct. Jeez. I just hate seeing these dry ponds like this because these are man-made little bodies of water here. And it's just where all of the junk ends up going. Slowly but surely down into there and more and more difficult to reach the trash 
accumulates. It's giant styrofoams. I thought we were over it with the styrofoams as well. I will say I don't see the styrofoam in products as much anymore. So that is good. Maybe it is, maybe it is improving. Maybe some companies buried within the, the corporate hellscapes. There are some people that care and that are willing to make, you know, 10 cents less for sale to do the environmentally conscious thing, which is important. We haven't really found anything cool yet today, guys. No cool, no, uh, no monies, no phones, no electronics. Interesting. There's also no, uh, I haven't noticed any booze, maybe a couple of cans and glasses, but that's it. That's it for the most part. Just a couple of cans and glasses at most. So that's good. But so glad you guys could join me. It's beautiful Thursday here. Beautiful Thursday out here. This gets all tangled up. Yeah. This Christmas. I think that might be our next venture as well, guys. We're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna start environmentally conscious music making. I think uh, music is the universal language, and I think it'll be the best way to reach the most people. Uh, the pen is always mightier than the sword. So we can do that. So that might be something that I do on the Patreon. You guys will see me write some, uh, some environmentally conscious poetry. Write some, write some piano, piano riffs. Oh my. You could just spend a lifetime going around and cleaning up trash from other people. Sometimes you have to sacrifice convenience for doing the right thing. The plastic craze of the, I would say it's probably relatively new of the past 30, 40, 50 years has to come to an abrupt end. Otherwise, I personally believe, I could be wrong and I'm hoping wrong, uh, we're snowballing the demise of every species on the planet. In the same way, like in the book Silent Spring, if we hadn't curbed pesticide use and herbicide use, things like DDT and the endless um, other ones that are trash, that looks like urine in a bottle, huh? It's most definitely a, a urine bottle. I see quite a bit of those. Humans so eager to urinate, they do it in a bottle and then throw it out their window. But in reality, if they just exited their car, risk the indecent exposure charge, uh, the urine would be good for the soil and the grass out here. So, oh, condoms, those are fun ones. Those are fun finds. What's that? Oh, that must be the screens of the, uh, the, the cell phone protector screens. I've seen a lot of these abandoned signs here too.
Abandoned signage, y'all. It's Christmas. Yuck. See how it gets caught in the trees, too? It just hangs over. Oh, boy. It's a gross. Come on now. Oh, there's a little one. A little boozer run. These things. I'll tell you what I hate. These mini. The mini booze things. The only people buying these are people hopelessly addicted to alcohol. And literally, 90% of those things do not end up in the garbage. They end up littered. Because somebody's trying to sneak alcohol somewhere and to get rid of it, they just toss it or, you know, they're chugging it in their car. And if it's in their car while they're driving, that's a felony. So instead of risking that felony, they just toss it out the window. What a horrible, horrible thing those little, those little bottles are. So we're getting very close to a full bag here, guys. Little by little, making our uh, making a difference. But like I've talked about before, I really want to make the biggest difference and transition off this single-use plastic stuff that we use for food and and drink and packagings of all kinds. Find some sort of a hemp or mycelial natural product that we can mass produce that somehow make it cheaper than plastic. So that way we please the ruthless capitalists and we also please the environmentally conscious people, which, you know, can be on either side of a political spectrum and still care about the environment you live in. We just gotta uh, be the species we were designed to be. Use these big old brains that have developed. We are not being very mindful of the place that spawned us. It's not very good manners. That'd be the equivalent of uh, going to your parents' house in your 30s and 40s, you know, even in your 50s and 60s, and weekly going over to your parents' house and just trashing and destroying it. Bring all your garbage from home, throwing it on their lawn, backing up their, their sinks. What is this? Let me know in the comments if you know what that could be for, guys. Always curious to find random things as we're out and about here. Here's somebody's hat. A little construction worker hat. It's, it's stuck in there, good. Ooh, the Iron Workers Union. Much gratitude to them and all of our other union workers out here building these roads and installing this stuff so that we could have the comforts of civilization. <laughs> Jeez, we are getting full fast here, y'all. See, as soon as I jinxed it, here comes all the booze. All the booze. The boozers love the booze and they love to litter. Ah, pricklies. Damn you, you pricklies. Nacer's ingenious prickly anti-human defense mechanism. Here's the masks too, geez. Masks everywhere. Prickly pears. A 
planter's peanuts. So it's always good to wear material like this here. It's like a plasticky instead of uh, cloth, wool, cotton. When you're out here doing this. Yeah, <laughs> here I am promoting plastic clothes while cleaning up the plastic. This must be interesting here, what's this? like some sort of car part. And indeed, it is. Huh. Ugh, bodies of water, guys. You can only imagine the nonsense going down in there. All the uh, pollution and such. Well, here is the back of a phone. So, as we get to the end of our, our little cleanup here, as our bag gets full, I just want to remind you guys that I love you. And uh, be kind to each other. Love the planet, love each other, and uh, we'll start to see most of the world's problems start to dissolve away. All dissolved away. Oh, look, a prickly on my camera. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Remember to like, drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Get out there, live that green revolution, y'all. Bye.